the senior programmers of the festival, please join me in welcoming back Roger Ross Williams. So, um, Roger's going to um, bring up some people, but I just want to we don't have any uh, mics in the audience, so I will please raise your hand if you have a question. I will call on you. Uh, please try to speak as loudly as possible. I'll repeat the question if, if we need to, whenever. And uh, let's uh, bring up. You wanna... uh, is, it, is it on? Here. No. I'll try this one. Uh, uh, can you uh, please um, join me in welcoming to the stage um, Bishop Christopher Sinyangio from Uganda. <laughs> was killed, how did the young white missionaries deal with that, and how did the young people in Uganda deal with the fact that God was being used to murder people? The question was, when David Cato was killed, how did the young white people deal the, with the that, the missionaries the people that, in Uganda deal with The 
message which has been filtered through from America to the young people in Uganda is that there is this international movement which began in America trying to take over the entire world. So for the young people, they see themselves as defending their turf. And when you see young people in the streets of Uganda, one thing they are clear about is the fact that what their pastors have told them, that's how things ought to be. And as a result, it's very easy to move them from one point to the other. Coming to the young white kids, they call them kids, the, pro the advantage they have, I don't know if you paid attention to the documentary, when they are calling them Muzungu. The word Muzungu originally uh, comes from the word which means God. So the white person, despite their ages, as you can tell, they are very young, but they tend to write on the residue of colonialism, where a white person had power. And that's what they use. And that's why they are able to get into places where myself or Bishop Christopher, it might take him 20 or 100 years to, to, to have an appointment with the president of Uganda. Yeah. But a young kid, high school kid can go to Uganda today. Tomorrow he'll be given a date. Yeah. Anyone else? Um, yes, the lady, waving your hand right there. Congratulations on a film that fired me up. Really. <laughs> but, you know, none of these uh, people preached anything that Jesus uh, espoused. Love, acceptance, love your neighbor as yourself. But here's my question. All this rashing and crying and praying and, and all this, it seems so shallow to me. Were they acting for the camera, do you believe, or... The question was, did the scenes where you saw people praying in a very exclamatory way, were they acting for the camera, or...? Uh, I don't think they were acting for the camera. I mean, when you go to IHOP, IHOP is a, there's a, it's a very young church. There's a, tons of you, and a lot of them come, came from troubled backgrounds. A lot of them um, have past history with drugs, and, and, and they come there, and this is like their hope. This is everything for them, and they are... They are so passionate. When you're at IHOP, there are people speaking in tongues. They, they really promote speaking in tongues. And there are people crying on the ground. Have you seen some of that? They are passionate. They are passionate at IHOP. And it's the same passion you see in Africa. They, they, it's the music. It's the, you know, what Mike Bickle said to me is that the, one of the ways he indoctrinates young people into, into his church is the music. If they have 24-hour prayer room where they have a 10-piece Christian rock band playing 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they have not stopped playing 4,000 musicians for 13 years. They also have 26 cameras broadcasting that all over the world. So we have uh, time for two more questions. Uh, the lady in the back there, yeah.
which is used to preach the gospel is your money. But I don't think this money is meant to preach bad news, which might lead to violence. There would be violence in Uganda, for instance, when the people are just killed. Mm. And many of us are afraid if a bill or the bill which is being debated is passed, what we call anti-homosexuality bill, it is still there. And we are being threatened. Uh, the last time the Speaker of the Parliament was saying that he was going to give a present to the people of Uganda by having this bill passed. But of course, it is not yet passed. But if it was passed, we fear a lot of people would be hurt mm -hmm. or even killed. And we don't think Jesus would be happy to see this <laughs> happen. So I think we need to tell our people like Gregory uh, Scott and uh, others that the gospel is not meant to be bad news. Because it would be bad news for many people in Uganda were killed because of this kind of preaching. Thank you all, and please uh, spread the good news about this family.